excuses on why you don't want to do stuff and cancel events and things of that nature. Uh, but sort of hearing the young guy Jeremy's story um, and also being able to come here and just speak about my story uh, with the possibility of encouraging other people to be involved in young kids' lives and essentially having people involved in my lives who took the time to help develop me. Uh, it kind of gave me like a, a charge of some sorts, you know what I'm saying? Just to understand that, you know, your messaging is important. Uh, the people who invest in these kids' lives are important. And essentially, um, I just have an opportunity to tell my story with the hopes that, uh, one, it can help a, a big brother or encourage them to, you know, said help to build a young kid up. Uh, but also, I've seen a couple kids in here um, to allow the kids to allow the help to, to come in your life. You'll hear throughout my story, uh, there was many times that I sort of pushed away help when help was there for me. Uh, and essentially, when I kind of grabbed on hold of to it, you know, I've kind of ended up in this situation right here. Football coach, he was like, hey, man, I see you play football. You're acting like a knucklehead, man. I'm telling you, you can do something with yourself. You can do something with football. Uh, you don't need to be coming back in here. And so for the most part, I just ignored Mr. Smith. You know, I kind of ignored him. I went through my 10-day period. I got out of the juvenile facility, and I went back home, but I was basically doing the same thing over and over again. It's getting in trouble, wanting to be the cool guy. Uh, and essentially wanting to be just a, just a popular kid who always got in trouble with this like fake bravado. 2002, I graduated early from high school. Uh, I went down to Columbus and uh, like the only thing on my mind at that point was basically uh, go to Ohio State, play for three years, and basically go to the NFL and that would be the end of all my problems. Uh, I also had like an ambition to want to be on MTV Cribs. That was like a dream of mine. That's something that I mean. <laughs> In the second season, I'm assuming that I'm going to go play. I'm assuming I'm going to go be in the run for the Heisman. I'm assuming that I'm about to go to win another national championship. Or that's not what happened. The NCAA came in. Uh, they investigated me for basically violations or um, things I had done wrong. Uh, the next thing I know, to make another long story short, they found a tremendous amount of violations and they suspended me uh, for two years. Context of life, just dealing with stress and how you basically get yourself out of um, the situation that I was in. I didn't know how to deal with that. And as a result from that, I found myself going right back to the habits that I had created, basically going back to the nightclubs. And nightclubs led me right back to doing the same stuff that I was doing uh, before. Partying all day, partying all night, drinking all day, drinking all night, Percocets, Vicodins, Oxycontin, I mean, it wasn't Oxycontin at the time, uh, but ecstasy and things, that, and things of that nature. It was just like me popping pills, just sort of, sort of trying to like, uh, sort of minimize everything I was going through. And so I had to say through, um, through the fall of 2003 and early into 2004, my life was just kind of in shambles. So it's really me not knowing how to basically cope with everything. It was just basically me finding a refuge in drugs, right? So